What do you think you could have done differently just to get over that hump and win that last game on Saturday? You know, as a team, we've got to figure out how to get more rebounds. That's the thing. Defensively, we're getting the shots we wanted, but we're not getting, we're not completing the stop with the defensive rebound. And that's the hardest thing right now for us to convey to our team is, hey, listen, we've done a good job. It's, it's for everything until the very final step. It's like, you know, turning in a 10-page paper and forget to put your name on it. What good does that do? Uh, we're playing defense. We're playing hard, but at the right, at the wrong time, we either have a defensive breakdown, a silly foul, or we don't come up with a defensive rebound. And those are just little details that we've got to figure out how to, you know, to finish. We've got to finish the play. And do you think those little details are due to lack of like leadership on the court, or what do you think could be the reason behind that? Lack of concentration. At the end of the day, I would tell you lack of concentration. Not understanding the moment. Um, you know, we talk to these guys in great detail that every possession in league game. It is the difference between winning and losing. Um, you know, you, you look at West Texas. It really came down to one possession with three minutes to go. Obviously, the Eastern Mexico game is one possession. At Lubbock on the road, one possession. You know, it's, it's truly one possession. You never know if that's in the first half, the second half, the last play of the game, the first play of the game. So it's attention, attention to detail and being locked in at all times. We talked after Thursday about confidence. How's the team after Saturday? You know, I mean, that's a struggle to start at the 2020 block for yeah, you know, the one good thing about kids is, is they forget pretty quick. Uh, they forget a lot of things. Uh, sometimes attention to detail is what they're forgetting. But uh, you're right, their confidence right now is a little bit uh, down the dumps. Uh, not having Carson play, that hurts us. You know, we, are, we're, we will never make excuses. 
I promise you that. Uh, but I think it's important to understand at the same time, you know, we are playing without our starting two and our starting three. So we've got to fill some holes um, and guys now kind of get out of their regular routine, get out of their comfort zone, they try to press, and you can't do that. Um, you know, after, after the shot, um, you know, that they changed from a three to a two, and then talking with the team yesterday, I mean, their confidence is a little bit rattled. Um, but I told them, listen, nobody's going to feel sorry for you. It's, it's how, how things work out sometimes. You got to pick yourself up and you got to go in there and try to do your absolute best in the next game. But before we get to the next game, is today. And we've got to try to win today. Uh, we're going on the road and playing two very good teams. Uh, Dallas Baptist is in the top ten in the country, and Charleston is starting to play extremely well. Yeah, and you, I mean, you did things better on Saturday than you did on Thursday, like taking care of the basketball, you took care of it better, bench points, stuff like that. I mean, you, you made some improvements, but like you said, other areas you regressed a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for us right now is we're having a hard time guarding the ball. Um, or, most importantly, getting the defensive rebound to secure it. That's what it is. I mean, defensively, we're not playing like we should. Uh, we're not guarding you know, the entire shot clock. We're not, we're not making the tough defensive plays right now. And it shows, you know, when you have one, two, three possessions, if it's the difference in winning and losing, it can really come down to those kind of things. So, uh, we've got to get better defensively. We've got to, we have to have some guys established, get red in the face, and want to rebound the ball defensively, because that's just not what we're doing right now. We're not doing very well. How do you feel like the, the flow of the offense has been since coming back from break? Well, you know, it's funny you ask because coming back from break, uh, I thought at Angelo and I thought at Lovett Christian, our defense was good enough to win. We held both teams in the 30%, our offense sputtered. Uh, and then versus West Texas, offensively we're fine, but our defense struggled. struggled. And then obviously versus Eastern, we didn't decide to play defense at all. We uh, gave up 100 points, uh, but our offense scored 97. So it, it really is a mixture of can we put something together consistently and I think a lot of it has to do with consistent lineups, consistent play. Um, you know, Fernandez Jones has played extremely well the last two games. Prior to that, we didn't even know who Fernandez Jones was. Um, and Carson Newsom had played really well, and now Carson's not there. So it's just kind of a, a unique deal. We just got to get some consistency, I think, uh, and then hopefully that will translate to both offense and defense. And talking about Fernandez Jones, I feel like he's almost come out of the corner or something like that. With, you know, him being able to knock yeah. out I mean, Christmas break was the best thing for him. Um, and so we hope that that continues. You know, and that typically happens with freshmen, is it just kind of takes some time for them to truly engulf themselves in the culture and the philosophy and sometimes understand, okay, what's my job, what's my role? And I'll give him a tremendous amount of credit. He's stuck with it. He's worked hard every day after practice, and it's starting to be a show. And you talk about consistency here. I have been one thing that's consistent. That's Pat. Reaching 1,500 points for his career over the weekend. Can you talk about how he's been for this team and what he's meant to this team on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, I mean, obviously right now, if Pat's carrying us offensively, then, you know, make no bones about it. Not only is he carrying us in terms of scoring production, but he's, he's, he's our lead leader in assists. Uh, excuse me, lead team, team, leading our team in assists and steals. I mean, he's doing a lot of things. Um, and that's going to take a toll on him. You know I mean? That's going to if he's not going to play well one night, where, where are we? So we're trying to can get a little bit of consistency to go with him. Uh, but he has been tremendous. He really has. He's been one of the best players in the league. Uh, one of the better players I've ever coached in terms of putting the ball in the basket. Uh, we just need him to continue to make the right plays. And I think he's trying to take the next steps uh, to do that. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Okay. Cool. I, I, will, I will. There is one thing, I guess. Uh, that we had a very teachable moment for our team um, this weekend. Um, unfortunately for us, I got a call from the commissioner and the shot that they waved and made it a two actually was a three. Um, but I told my team that as we talked and we talked about confidence, they all thought it was the right call. They thought it was a three and actually got overturned during the game. But getting the call from the commissioner, um, I told my team, hey, that, that's how life works. And the only thing that we really truly care about is people accepting accountability. And the crew accepted accountability, the commissioner accepted accountability. So even though we lost that game and that was not the reason why, I thought that was a teachable moment for our team to really understand we all make mistakes. And if you're responsible and you're mature and you, and, and you address it, then the life goes on. And I think that could be a really good thing for our team, not just winning and losing, but understanding that people do make mistakes, but they hold themselves accountable. So I actually appreciate the officials and I appreciate the commissioner being honest with us. Um, and I think that's a really good thing for our team to learn in, in this moment. Okay. Right Thanks, Kevin. Thank appreciate it.
Uh, next up is head women's basketball coach Ray Booth, who's Falcons in front of a big win on Saturday against Eastern New Mexico. Oh, yeah. It's been a Monday for me and it has been the last one. I know, right? Yeah. Are you going? Talk about the last two weeks. Just talk about Thursday and Saturday together. Yeah, um, you know, it was still a pretty good Monday. Um, you know, rough week. You know, uh, we limited number wise. Uh, West Texas is West Texas. They make you pay for every mistake. I think I said that this time last week, and they did. I um, thought we had very few and short lived spurts during that game where it looked like we were starting to figure it out as a young group. And I think what we took away from that game was just uh, maybe complete embarrassment. Um, and we, we knew we needed to redeem ourselves on Saturday. So our goal as a team is to never go 0-2. And, and so we're going to get anybody back. Um, we hope to have some more bodies this week and next week. Um, but we wanted to respond to the West Texas loss uh, as well as we could in terms of effort and energy and just drive and grit. And I think our team did a great job of doing that. Coach, how about those freshmen? How about them? Right? <laughs> I told you guys from day one they were special group. So all but five points came from our freshman class. and. And I think it helps when you make shots, but they did. They didn't want to matter. And Rory Carter knocked down two of our three threes uh, in a row that kind of really helped our energy and our confidence uh, when they made a pretty big run. Coach, not only is this group you know, a lot of freshmen, but you're pretty guard heavy. And like you have noticed, uh, yeah. what can you say about this group? I mean, you're pretty much just being small, not just small, but you know, and very young. Well, adversity. Uh, for this group, they've been through it now. I mean, starting before Christmas break with just the amount of injuries we've had, I definitely wouldn't have thought that we would be in a position uh, with as young as we are and as small as we are to be in games in the Lone Star Conference. Um, I just think that is a testament to how tough these players are and how much they want to play for each other and, and win for each other. Um, but they're, they're solid and we are small and we're going to continue to be small, hopefully not as small on Thursday as we were on Saturday, but but we are, and um, I think it's a team, team team effort to play defense. It's never going to be just one person's job to shut down number 41, an All-American at Tarleton. It's going to be a collective effort, and we're going to do that by mixing up our defenses and really emphasizing their uh, post play, and that's our key to win. And you talk about having a small team. But Alexis played pretty big on Saturday. Can you just talk about the way she was able to control she, the paint, get rebounds, do right. things down low? She has some special moments, and I think everybody that watches her play, when she has those, it's exciting. Uh, I think our challenge for her to reach potential is going to do that consistently and not just in games. Every single day in practice, and just to use her, her gifts that she's been given, because she's a great player. But yeah, when she, there was a run in the third quarter at West Texas, where she really helped get us a little bit uh, closer scoring-wise, and we just have to keep feeding the ball, which is not like that. Yeah, I mean, you had good efforts at times against West Texas, but how did that, you know, you said you translated to, you were kind of embarrassed. How did you deal with that except Friday going into Saturday? They were really, we broke down the statue, and it's pretty simple. They scored roughly 22 points off second chances. That was a key area for us. And I asked the team if we cut that in half, would that be realistic? And they said yes. They scored 20 points in transition. That was a key area for us. And I asked if we cut that in half, and they said yes. Well, right now, that's 20 points. You know, we lose by 29. And uh, we shot 55% from the free throw line. Um, so just looking at those areas that we were embarrassed by, second chance points and the points in transition, um, should have been a closer game in terms of effort. Those two areas we wanted to win on Saturday, and I think we did a good enough job, uh, except for the free throw percentage part, uh, mm -hmm. to get the job done. So we learned from the stat sheet, really, what points we gave them. We gave them so many points and second chances, and we let them run on us. And so we needed to win those for Saturday, and the result showed that we did. Now, how can it win from Saturday going to his road trip now that Jeff go to Tarleton, tough opponents like that? Well, considering how young we are, I think they just needed to see it and taste the win. You know, like we can do this and get some confidence. 
So I hope that carries forward, but our work ethic has got to increase, not decrease. We can never be comfortable, and I think that's something challenging for our coaching staff that we have to make sure that we're constantly taking steps forward um, and building on Saturday, not keep looking back at being happy and satisfied with the last game. We want to focus on the next one. And again, this, these freshmen, they're special. You know, everybody that, that's on our team, even the people that are hurt that can't play with us, they're saying the same stuff. You know, confidence, confidence, you're special, keep going. And uh, Rory Carter uh, went through a slump um, right before the break, and has she turned it on? You know, she's fearless now. She's one of the best freshmen in this conference. Good. Cool. cool. Rory Carter. Awesome. And next up is Rory Carter, one of the freshmen on the team of guard. What's up, Roy? How you doing? Hi. That's good. That's good. How's your Monday? Um, good. Did Strive for Monday. Doing great. That's my favorite. Can you talk about the back and back shots? Everyone's talking about it. How you got the crowd hype, me hype, everyone watching hype. It was a great one. <laughs> um, honestly, it was just so much like fun and um, just being able to be in that moment and like help my team get up and. We're all just like throwing good passes and it's like everybody's hype. It kind of got me hype and like just adrenaline pumping and it's like, oh yeah, I'm about to make this like a shot. We're, about, we're coming to the game and then that timeout came and we're just hype. I think it just kind of got me going. Like, yeah. Do you think that's where the momentum shifted in the game? Yeah, I think so. Just because it was the first shot and then got the second shot and then like that timeout everybody was hyped and it's like okay we got this now we're about to keep scoring and everybody's gonna we were just doing good and it was just fun to play you know? now over the last couple of games you've been having high number of minutes on the court and speaking to coach last week she mentioned how she told you you gotta start playing like a junior and not like a freshman what does it mean for your coach to be able to have so much confidence in you to keep you on the court for that long and also having that much trust for you to play like a junior instead of a freshman. Yeah, um, I think, like I appreciate like she really trusting me and you know talking to me every day like you got this, you, know, you got it because I do get nervous sometimes and her just telling me every day in practice like you gotta keep going, you gotta push, you know you gotta work on little things because in the game it's gonna be successful. I just think my mentality changed throughout you know this year from when Christmas break hit, I hit that slump. So now you're telling me you gotta turn around, you gotta go. So it kind of gave me like a boost of confidence when she told me that, like, you gotta get this to go. What's one of the biggest things that you've improved on since coming, you know, your first game at UTPB to now? I think my leadership and being able to be that point guard, just because I was like never really that type of point guard to be out there and actually lead my team. I feel like I've really done better in that, like pushing in transition, making sure we know where we are, get just get the team flowing. And overall, I think me talking on the court, communicating has gone like way better than before. Yeah. Um, Coach mentioned it, but being a young team, don't you think? <laughs> don't you think that this last game probably provided uh, some confidence for you guys as freshmen, especially? Yes, a, a lot. Um, not just me, but Holly. Lex, it's Jordan, we all kind of felt it, and when she had put us in the fourth quarter, it was all freshmen and one uh, sophomore, it just kind of gave us like, okay, we can do this. Coach trusts us to be in this game, to finish the game, so it's like, we're going into the next game like we got this. Cool. And you talked about that leadership earlier on the court, and I kind of saw it, especially defensively, you pointing out areas where people were missing their spots or missing their assignments. How, what's that becoming like on the defensive side of the end, being that vocal leader? Um, I think we, we kind of need that as a team. Um, we're not perfect, of course, and we just need somebody to be out there to let us know, hey, you got to be in your spot, you know. And it kind of, me saying it, it kind of feeds off other people, so then they tell me when I need to be in my spot, that I'm not perfect, but I think me being that leader out there kind of gives the confidence to the other freshmen to go, okay, I'm going to say something too. So it's like, it's 
So that just means, you know, we're all <coughs> saying, okay, we got to get in here, we got to do here, we got to be in some type of defense. And, of course, we're going to get confused through, throughout the way, but we, we hold each other together. We're pretty good. All right, we're good. Thanks, Rory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And to close out today's press conference is men swimming and diving coach Cam Kiner, who spout things came in second place at the Boston College invite on Saturday. I hit it, Tom. I hit it. <laughs> oh, change of height here, sorry guys. <laughs> Just a tiny bit, man. Just a little bit. Uh, great week at Forest at the Austin College invite. Got second place out of seven teams overall. Um, battled out against uh, Oklahoma Christian was the team that came out on top, but had really good battles, won uh, 11 total events, two of those being on the boards for our guys getting first and second place. Um, just a really good weekend for us after uh, our winter training uh, concluded this past week. Um, it's the hardest time of the year for any swim team and, and going out and training, you know, maximum amount of yards that we can, maximum amount of hours that we can, uh, and, and going out and still competing well and, and hitting pretty decent times for this time of the season. Uh, was really exciting for us. So uh, we've got one more competition after this uh, at Southwestern and Georgetown in about two weeks, and then we move to our conference championships in Cleveland, Mississippi, looking to get some national cuts and, and move some people to the national uh, championship in a couple weeks after that. Uh, over the weekend, your relays did really well at the Port de Gros, and then also on the men getting second place. Can you talk about how your relays are kind of starting to shine? Or? Absolutely. Um, you know, our ladies did a really good job, and it's led by um, two returners, and then we've got two freshmen on those relays as well who are uh, uh, really coming in and just swimming as fast as they can and, and, and getting on board with what we're doing. Um, very uh, coachable athletes, so really excited about that. Our men did a really good job too. We had a couple of our uh, top guys not there this weekend just resting, um, getting a little recovery from the hard training, and so really excited about what we did without you know some of our top guys and had a lot of guys step up where we needed them to. Uh, but overall, you know, our relays really, you know, stepped up and competed well in, in a tough environment. And, you know, travel was a little crazy on Friday as well with, uh, uh, we hit some storms in the DFW area and then the next day we had some ice and sleep while we were up there too. So a lot of uh, factors kind of before we got into the pool that uh, kind of kept us up a little bit. But for the most part, you know, we were able to do what we needed to do. What are some of the major areas that you're looking to improve upon before uh, those conference championships? I think the little things is, are, are the things that we really need to do. Uh, making sure that we finish hard into the into the wall in our, in our races. Uh, making sure we uh, take off at, at a really fast speed on our relay takeoffs. Um, we actually had one of those relays where originally said that they were DQ, and then when we got the results, we weren't. So it was kind of interesting to see that. Um, and it was some you know some of our younger swimmers who were taking off a little bit earlier on the relays than than we'd like to. And those are huge points at conference. So. Um, for us, making sure that we take off at a good time, but make sure that it's quick enough for us to be able to be our fastest. Um, but for the most part, I think we're doing a great job of our team, uh, really cheering each other on, really keeping each other motivated, especially during the tough time of the year. And, uh, you know, carrying out the next, you know, month until we have conference, uh, keeping each other excited now that we have school going as well, um, to stay on top of everything that we're doing. Coach, I know earlier in the season you guys had the chance to, you know, Compete against uh, some Division One opponents, and you even, sure. you know, defeated some Division One opponents with your younger swimmers, and I guess your whole team in general. What's some, you know, areas that you've really seen improvement in since then? Well, you know, I was talking about how we do need to finish some of our races. Uh, you know, right now we're a little bit tired, uh, but when we're well rested and everything, we did a really good job at mid-season uh, finishing our races and doing everything that we need to do. Um, usually we're one of the teams that tend to get out touched a little bit just because we're gliding into the wall and not finishing as hard as we can. Um, and at that meet we're out touching a lot of teams. And so I think that's something that we've really seen over the past couple years of things that we've got to change and got to be better at uh, to, to be successful. And that's where we out touch some people at those Division One competitions as well. And uh, some people trained over the summer as well that really helped. And, and you know, with this young team, they understand when they come back in the fall, uh, that they're really going to have to train hard over the summer to make sure that we only have six months to really get it done. If you don't do the work in the off season and, and over the summer, it's really hard to kind of start off strong with our training early on to where we can have as much rest in between in the mid season and as much rest as we can at the end of season at our conference championships. And Coach Nikita continues to have a great season winning an event this past weekend. What are you seeing out of her so far? 
Um, just really excited about what he's doing. Um, he's just uh, a, a spark for our team and somebody that really gets everybody else motivated as well. Um, he just gets up on the block and races. And the thing I really like about him too is he likes being loose at the, at the meets as well. Um, at the beginning of the season when we went to TCU, there was some song playing over and he was just dancing, doing some type of line dancing country thing that even the other team saw it was cheering on and, and thinking it was kind of a cool thing that he was doing. He just goes in and has fun with everything that he does. Um, and then when he gets up on the block, he knows what he needs to do and is very well prepared. So um, he's got great teammates to help push him, but he also pushes the other guys to uh, get faster and, and continue to race each other in practice. And that's where uh, we've just really been successful is everybody's on board with what everybody's doing and wants to raise the bar even higher with their goals. So um, can't ask really for a much better team right now. I'm excited about the recruiting that we're doing, though, and I think we're going to have an even better team next year. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys.